What's up, music fans of the internet? I'm Kevin. I'm Derek. And together we are last week's album, giving you two opinions on the best new music. And in this episode, we're talking about Let the Good Times Roll by J.D. McPherson. But before we get into the album, we're going to kick things off like we always do, drinking a little beer. Cheers, Derek, and everyone at home. Cheers, Kevin, everyone at home. And I'll start with a little background on J.D. McPherson for you guys at home. He is a singer, songwriter, guitarist from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. He grew up wanting to be a visual artist, but uh, found music to be a little bit more instantly gratifying, in his own words. And uh, sonically, he's sort of a renaissance man, known for his throwback style rooted in 50s rock and roll and rhythm and blues. And his debut album, Signs and Signifiers, was very well received by both critics and fans, and Let the Good Times Roll is his second album, which just came out last week. So let's talk about what it sounds like. Derek, what do you think? Kevin, I think Let the Good Times Roll sounds like J.D. McPherson does to 50s rock, what Brian Setzer does to swing music, except with a fewer cat references, which being a dog person, I'm much more hip to, if you dig. (laughs) Awesome. I really enjoy the cat joke in there. Uh, I'm going to say this sounds like Little Richard and Chuck Berry jamming with the Black Keys and Honey El Khatib. So all that together should give you a good idea what it sounds like. Let's talk about key tracks. What are you picking? I'm going with It Shook Me Up. All right, I'm going to go with You Must Have Met Little Caroline. I say that because there's a question mark on the end of it. But, Derek, why don't you start us off with It Shook Me Up. It comes uh, before mine, anyway. It's number five on the album. Track five, you're correct. This one features a prominent, pounding piano riff a la Jerry Lee Lewis with a lot less cousin loving. Um, There's a boogieing bass guitar riff, snare-heavy drum beat. Uh, There's a brief but really cool drum solo towards the end. Uh, uh, there's a no-frills electric guitar duet in the middle. Um, it, the chorus features this lead versus backing group melodies, which is just kind of cool. This one's just a straight-ahead kind of 50s rockabilly uh, burner here. The lyrics describe being uh, phased by a bad day. Um, for example, he says, didn't do nothing but hem and haw, didn't stick a piece of paper in the wailing wall, I uh, didn't find a stranger we're talking to. Uh, but charmingly, he ends each verse lamenting, and I didn't get some time with you. So um, in that last line, he really kind of captured or reflected the tone of, you, you know, many of the songs that he's kind of um, uh, using as an archetype or, or guide here for, uh, or, or, you know, just from that era. So I, th- I, I just thought it was really cool the way it kind of came together and uh, just really dug the kind of... Uh, Great balls of fire feel uh, feel on this one. Yeah, um, I'm I'm glad that it's not about cousin Lovin'. I actually kind of interpreted it. Maybe it's about blue balls. Uh, he keeps referencing I didn't spend any time with you, and he sounds very angsty and anxious about that. Kevin, that is the complete opposite of great balls on fire. <laughs> Touche. Touche. <laughs> but enough about balls. Um, <laughs> Let's jump to my key track, number eight on the album, called You Must Have Met Little Caroline. And uh, it has these really spooky, echoey vibes, twangy guitar, snapping drums, howling vocals, thumping bass, uh, this sort of experimental, out-of-tune piano solo. And um, I really like it because he puts his modern take on this sort of 50s rockabilly and takes it to the next level, um, combining sort of classic bass and drums with more postmodern guitar and piano, plus this thick and smoky overall production that sort of channels uh, Caroline's ominous vibe into the whole track itself. So definitely check out It Shook Me Up, and you must have met little Caroline. And let's talk about best lyrics. Derek, what are you picking? Uh, I'm taking one from It Shook Me Up, and uh, I think this might uh, echo to your interpretation of the lyrics here. He says, well, I didn't find a penny with a good side up. Didn't dump a little sugar in my cup. Got a murderous secret to own up to, and I didn't get some time with you. Just really dug it. Yeah, that is a good one. Uh, I'm choosing one simple line from the track Bossy, 
where he says, did you win a black ribbon for breaking hearts? And I really dug it because I feel like his predecessors and the artists that he sort of draws upon would have wrote that same line but said blue ribbon. And he really brings it into today's sort of darkier, uh, darker, edgier times by simply saying black ribbon. And it really captures his sort of modern revival style in one little line. So check out those lyrics. And overall rating, Derek, what are you giving Let the Good Times Roll? Um, I'm giving it a 4 out of 5, but I'm kicking a question right back to you. So you're saying he's just saying everything else that everyone's been thinking but not been saying for like 60 years? I digress. <laughs> um, 4 out of 5, I thought it was very refreshing to hear these early rock and roll sounds reimagined this way. Uh, very intricately, intricately crafted bridge builder, which we didn't even talk about. Um, the only ballad on the song, if you will, written with Dan Auerbach, which I believe was the source of your Black Keys reference in the sounds like. Um, I really dug that one, which I'm even describing it kind of as a key track because there was just 50s doo-wop swing beat, um, and then it just, uh, there, there's a lumbering, distorted, you know, deep, dark d guitar blast towards the end, which uh, it just, uh, it was fantastic. Bad, and take this with a grain of salt, maybe slightly lacking in overall cohesion, but, I mean, that's tough to expect that only because it's, re you know, he's really focusing on kind of recreating these sounds and not necessarily a whole album. So um, I'm giving it really a strong four. It could be misconstrued as a five potentially, but, but four, four for the books. All right, well, make no mistake about this. I'm giving it a five out of five. Um, I think it's great in its retro attention to detail, but where McPherson really shines, it sort of outshines his contemporaries, is he puts his own take on that era. Sure, there's a straightforward tracks like Let the Good Times Roll, Mother of Lies, everybody's talking about the All-American, but there's also the sludgy bridge on Bridge Builder, which Derek just mentioned. There's a really clever modern lyrical take on It's All Over But the Shouting, and it shook me up. And I think his voice really nails the sort of soul and snarl of that early rock and R&B. But overall, his style really, really puts a new spin on it. And um, I think that's what takes it to the next level with um, overall. And then also, I kind of want to nickname him McFearless instead of McPherson. Because like oh. I think, instead of treating oh. these sort of precious untouchables and we have to do it just like they did it, he's not afraid to break the rules and break these songs and rebuild them. Um, just from scratch. So there you have it, guys. A 5 out of 5 for myself. A 4 out of 5 from Derek. So definitely check out Let the Good Times Roll by J.D. McPherson. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to us here on last week's album, where we're giving you two opinions on the best new music. As always, I'm Kevin. Robin Derek. And we'll see you next time, guys.